here we're going to talk about enthalpy in a very different way. We're going to look at what we call Hess's law. Now, who was Hess? Well, Hess was a Swiss-born chemist who ended up living in Russia, and he discovered this relationship between how reactions occur and how heat is released. And in some cases, he realized that we could not find the enthalpy change, the amount of heat released or absorbed by a reaction, because it would be very difficult to produce a reaction like that in the laboratory. But there were similar reactions that included the same products and or reactants for which we could do a test and could find the enthalpy change. And here's an example where we start with uh, phosphorus gas with four atoms per molecule, 10 chlorine molecules or moles if you want to call it moles, and that produces then uh, four moles of phosphorus pentachloride. Very difficult to do. But we can do this instead in the laboratory, and in each case we're able to measure the enthalpy change. So Hess's law says the following. The total enthalpy change during the complete course of reaction, for example this one, even though we may not be able to produce this in the laboratory readily, of a reaction is the same whether or not the reaction is made in one step like this or in multiple steps through a course of other reactions to finally get from these reactants to these products. So he said it doesn't matter how you get there. If you go through one, two, ten reactions, if in the end you start with these and end up with that, the delta H of the sum of all those other reactions will be equal to the enthalpy change of the single reaction as presented. That was very powerful because, like I said, in a lot of cases you can do this, this kind of reaction by itself. It's very easy to do the other reactions and then just simply add and subtract the result as the enthalpy changes of those. So now the question is, how can we use these given reactions with their associated enthalpy changes to come up with the enthalpy change of this reaction right here? And that's the key. How do we do that? Well, let's... There's actually a couple methods and I'll show you this method here first and then in the subsequent videos I'll show you some very handy little tricks to use for this kind of thing. But I want you to kind of get a feel of what we're trying to do here. Somehow we have to come up with a combination of these so that this will be the result when we add them all up. It's kind of like an algebraic addition. You add up everything on the left side, you add up everything on the right side, and when you do you end up with this as a result. So we can get kind of a hint. Notice we want to end up with four phosphorus pentachlorides on the right side. Now if I go in here, I see, well right here I have one phosphorus pentachloride and so if I take this and I reverse this reaction then I end up with this on the right side. Of course when you reverse the reaction then of course you have to change the sign on the enthalpy change. So let's start with reaction number one. What we're going to do is we're going to take number one, so number one, and we're going to reverse the products and the reactants. So let's do that. So we take this first equation on the left side we're going to write phosphorus trichloride uh, plus chlorine gas and that would then produce, if we turn it around, phosphorus pentachloride and that's a solid. And so now the enthalpy change for that will be this number times the negative one or a minus, so delta H for this is equal to a minus 157 kilojoules. Alright, so now at least we have on the left side the same thing and let me, so that we don't get confused, let me circle this in a red line like this so that we see this is what we're trying to get and notice we now have one of these where we need, oh sorry, <laughs> we have one of these where we need four of those. So now the next thing we want to do and let's call this equation number three. So we call this equation number three. Uh, now we want to take equation number three and multiply it times four because if we do that we'll get four phosphorus pentachloride uh, moles on the right side which is exactly what we want. We won't have quite what we want on the left side but that's okay we'll keep manipulating that as we go on. So we're going to take this equation number three and multiply it times four. When we do that on the left side we'll get four phosphorus trichlorides plus four chlorine gas, moles of chlorine gas, producing four moles of phosphorus pentachloride. Of course the delta H will now be four times this number, so four times 157 would be uh, 628, and of course it's negative, 628 kilojoules. So in this reaction we would release 628 kilojoules 
of, uh, of energy. All right, now, what else do we need to do here? On the left side, we have phosphorus trichloride. We don't have any of that in the equation we're trying to set up, so we want to get rid of this somehow. We also have 10 chlorine moles, moles of chlorine gas. We only have four, so we need six more. And we also have phosphorus gas, which we don't have yet. So let's go over here and see what we have. Notice in this equation, I have, a phos I have phosphorus, I have six chlorines. Well, six plus these four will give me 10. That looks like it's pretty good. Plus I have this on the right side. Hmm. Let's go ahead and add that to this equation. So we're going to take this and we're going to add equation number two. So let me graphically illustrate that. We're going to plus uh, equation number two added to equation number, let's call this equation number four. Okay, let's do that. So four plus two. So that's what we're trying to do here. We're going to add those two equations together. And then when we do that, we should be much closer to the eventual equation we want. So we're going to add um, one of those. So phosphorus gas plus six moles of chlorine gas, which will then end up with four phosphorus trichlorides on the right side as a product. And that would then release the delta H for that reaction is equal to minus 1,207 kilojoules. All right, so now we're adding four and two together. And when we do that, what do we end up with? All right, on the left side, we have four phosphorus trichloride gas, moles of gas, plus we have phosphorus gas like this. Now we have 4 plus 6, we have plus 10 moles of chlorine gas. And those are all the reactants on the left side of the equation, which end up giving us 4 phosphorus pentachloride, which is a solid, plus 4 moles of phosphorus tri trichloride, which is a gas. All right, now notice though that on the left side we have 4 phosphorus trichloride gas. Uh, moles of gas, and on the right side we have four moles of phosphorus trichloride. And so since we have the same thing on both sides of the equation, we can simply get rid of it. We can subtract that amount from both sides, like so, and look what we have left. Phosphorus gas, just like over here, plus 10 moles of chlorine gas, which we have over here, reacting to give us four moles of phosphorus pentachloride, which we have here. So it looks like this is the exact equation we want. And then all we have to do is, to get that, we have to add these two equations together, which means we have to add those two enthalpy changes together. So the total enthalpy change, when I add those two together, is minus 1207 and a minus 628, which is a minus 1,835 kilojoules. And so the answer is, if we want to know the enthalpy change for this reaction, by using these two that were given to us, we can manipulate them in such a way that we end up with the very same reaction here. We add up all the enthalpy changes accordingly, and that will then be the total enthalpy change for this reaction right here. Very, very powerful, very tricky, uh, but very useful. Again, how did we do that? We were asked to find the enthalpy change for this equation. We didn't know what it was. We knew these two equations. We can measure those in the laboratory. So the first thing we did was we took equation number one, and we flipped it around, so we would have this on the right side, which is what we want eventually, but we only have one of those. We need four of those. So we multiply the equation by four to give us four of those on the right side. But then we have this on the left side, which means we didn't have phosphorus gas, and we didn't have 10 moles of chlorine gas. But then we took this equation right here, and we placed it underneath, and we added the two together. When we did that, we ended up with four moles of phosphorus pentachloride, and we end up with four moles of phosphorus trichloride on the right side. On the left side, we did end up with 10 moles of chlorine gas and one mole of phosphorus gas and also four moles of phosphorus trichloride gas. And then we realize that this and this appears on the, both sides of the equation, so we can cancel it out. And then what's left is the exact equation that we wanted. And all we had to do then is add the enthalpy changes for those two equations since we added them to give us a total enthalpy change over there. And that's how we use Hess's law. Very good example and a very good introduction to this technique. 
And if you want to see some more examples in the next several videos, I'll show you some clever techniques of how to do that in two different ways. So stay tuned.